we're on the course God's Kingdom Blueprint, and we're in class number two, and we're going to talk about God's pattern. Remember, we went through several definitions for blueprint last week, and we said that while blueprint is not found in Scripture, there are a lot of biblical words that are, that are associated and mean blueprint. So... One of those words, we did kind of did an introduction last week, but one of those words is the word pattern. Everybody say pattern. pattern. So there is a pattern of life that we're going to talk about in God's kingdom blueprint. If we knew how secure we are, we'd never worry again. And hopefully that's what this course will help us get to. And we're all working on it. Me too. So. Uh, we're going to talk tonight about the pattern of life concerning God's kingdom blueprint. And remember, wave at me if you've got a question or a comment. You will not disturb me. I want, I want the interaction. Hebrews. Let's start with Hebrews. Yes. Chapter 8, verses 5 through 7. And it's talking about the forerunners, those in the old covenant uh, that brought us to this point. Those who serve unto the example and shadow, everybody say shadow, shadow, of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished, admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. God led Moses to make the tabernacle. As God admonished Moses to make the tabernacle, for see, says he, that thou make all things. How many things? All things, all things according to the pattern. Yes. Wow. Not some of the things. You can't insert your own little figurines. <laughs> yeah. But you got to make all things in the tabernacle according to the pattern showed to you in the mount. By how much also he is the mediator of a better, better means advancing. A better covenant. Which was established upon better. In that case, better means fulfilled. Promises. Or to be fulfilled. For if that first covenant had been faultless or literally had it not been lacking something then should no place have been sought for the second so now we're hearing that he's talking about a pattern and then he's talking about the fact that the mediator of a better or more advanced covenant was going to take what was established and bring it forward. No, I was just thinking, it's interesting. God did create a perfect covenant in the old covenant, but by the sin of Adam and Eve, which means that part wasn't covered. Right. Which now it's covered. That's where the lacking was. Or where the exactly. The reason and that's why God's bringing everything back to the original. Isn't that amazing? So... It was established. There's some words, I kind of put them in a darker font so you could, they'd stick out to you. It was a shadow of something. A shadow means it's not yet fully manifested. A shadow means it's yet to come. A shadow of heavenly things. It's not a shadow in heaven. It was a shadow here. Because of Adam's trespass, now God is in the process of bringing things back. So he does this by making a tabernacle. And he says, now make the, everything, all things in the tabernacle according to the pattern. Showed to you in the holy mount. But he says, even though that's important. I'm going slow on purpose. Mm -hmm. Even though that's important, he says, 
But now he, Christ Jesus, has obtained a more excellent ministry. Even though that was a shadow. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Even though it was a pattern, yes, yes. the pattern wasn't yet fully manifested. Mm -hmm. yeah. It wasn't fully complete yet. So he made, was made a mediator of a better covenant, an advancing covenant, which was established upon better or more fulfilled promises. No. Because the first covenant was not full. It was lacking something. It was lacking the other side of the story. How many of you are glad we live on the other side of the story? Everything in the old was pointing, but a pointing is a shadow. So I wanted to set the stage for that. Because we're going to talk about, talking about? We're going to be talking. <laughs> I want to talk today. We're going to be talking about the pattern perfected, the pattern prophesied, and the pro pattern prevails. Hallelujah. And I'm going to have some fun. So let's talk, start with talking about the pattern perfected. It is literally a pattern is another word for blueprint. So the blueprint is established. But it's progressing from a shadow to being revealed. So we need to investigate the word pattern just a little bit. Pattern. What did I say? Pattern is another word for blueprint. But even though the blueprint is set, it's progressing from being a shadow to the revealed glory through Jesus Christ. So when we look at the word pattern, the Hebrew word is tabnet. It means likeness, form, similitude, figure, structure, proportion. The Greek word is hypotiposis. And it means not only form, but it means design, example, type, and alignment to something. Literally, a pattern is a foreshadow. A foreshadow of something. Yes, that, that is different. That's talking about uh, there is no shadow as far as him turning. But this is a foreshadow. It's talking about something yet to come. A showing of something to come. Yes. I think it's more symbolic yeah. in nature. Yeah. In other words, it, it's a promise yet to be fulfilled. Now, I want you to see this because this is something... That God revealed that to me just knocked my socks off. <laughs> See, I'm still wearing them, but I put them back on. <laughs> Patterns were set on building foundations. And structure. But patterns were not set on religious ceremonies. Religious ceremonies only reflected the pattern. But the patterns were set on the foundation, the actual structure, the building of something. Mm -hmm. So all their like um, feasts and all that stuff they used, used to celebrate and all that wasn't that kind of a pattern? We're going to number two on the feasts. <laughs> I'm gonna have a nice Oh boy, I can't, I can't hardly wait. Yeah, see how smart you are. You're way ahead of us. <laughs> Did you peek? No, okay. Um, so now, I want to say it again. Patterns were set on building, foundation, and structure. Not on religious ceremonies. The religious ceremonies were simply, simply a reflection 
of something that had a pattern. Now, in saying that, Dr. Rick, you're meaning the patterns were set not physically like imprints or things that were placed on these buildings or foundations. Right. But the patterns of the foundations and the buildings. They're different because, in other words, they reflected the purpose of the, right. the pattern, but they were not the pattern. Right. Like when God was describing the tabernacle and how it would be put yeah. together and set. Yeah. If that was prophetic of what was to come. Right. But the pattern remained. But the materials just reflected what the pattern was trying to be about. Now we're going to get it more. Okay. Look at this. And I've got, this is great. Please ask those questions. I may have to say, I don't know. <laughs> but the patterns were set in something that was being built. Something that was a foundation. Something that was a structure. Not on the religious ceremonies that reflected a meaning for it. Jesus, like the, the scripture that um, to build your house on a firm foundation, road, not the sand. Yeah. How does that scripture go? Can you remember? Yeah, you, you, yeah, and it rained on the the yeah, one that yeah, built yeah. on the sand. Yes, mm -hmm. those are examples. Mm -hmm. So now Jesus never went against the pattern, mm -hmm. but he did go against Pharisaical traditions. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yes. He never went against the pattern. Thank you. The pattern that was set by God, he never went against that. He fulfilled it. I just got goosebumps. How many of you love the Lord tonight? And I'm telling you, we, we have, I don't, I know he's not a superhero, but sometimes I feel that way about my love for him. Wow. The in heaven, and so it needs to yes. Be done on earth. yes. So everything that was a foreshadow was already done in heaven, but yet to be manifested in the earth. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Juicy. Okay. No, this is just we're getting started, and this is okay. So I'm going to say it again, and I, I and I'm oh wow, we've got a good group on here. Hi, Shaniqua is watching, um, and hi, King and Queen, and. All the rest of y'all, I get so excited I forget to look, but I always look at the comments afterwards. So keep on bringing them. And if you have questions, please do that. But I want to read this again. Jesus never went against the pattern. Amen. But he did go against the pharisaical religious traditions. Yes, when they knew, thought they knew what to do, but they never knew why. So Exodus 25 and 9 says... According to all that I show you after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it because they all, they all uh, re represented something. They were not the pattern, but they represented something in the pattern. Now, you know why I'm making a big deal out of that in a minute, because pattern is order. And the pattern did not start in the visible. See, people keep st still keep worshiping the weak and beggarly things. They keep worshiping the outward things we do ceremonially. And it's all right to remember what those ceremonies mean, but we do, that that is not <laughs> that is not what we can say is the pattern that represented a pattern, but. The pattern is order, but then start in the visible. So we can't just worship the visible. Well, I have all the instruments and all the implements, and I even have some tabernacle stuff in my house. And woo, look at me, I'm all holy. Yeah. No, it doesn't start in the visible, but it's set in a promise. How many of you know everything in the physical had to come out of the spiritual? Yes. So... We have to realize that we don't keep looking for or repeating the pattern, but we have to build on it. What's that? 
We build what's already given to us. Exactly. But, you know, if you, if some of you ladies, I don't know anything about sewing, so correct me. But if you, I know that, that sometimes they, you have in something called a pattern oh, yes. and you're going to sew something. Mm -hmm. Well, if you just sat and looked at the pattern and said, look at the beautiful dress I made. Yeah. No, that's, you haven't, you haven't manifested anything yet. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, right? You, you haven't sewn anything yet. We see the blueprint, yes. but we don't see the dress. Yes. And even taking that another step, a lot of times if you try to repeat the same pattern, things start to get shaved off, shifted, oh, wow. modified. It does not yeah. produce always the same. Yeah. And, and then you get more of your deterioration. Yeah. Yes, and the copy of the copy. Wow. And exactly wow. to that point, that's why God never said to worship the tabernacle. Yeah, that's right. But worship in the yeah. tabernacle. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wow. Because even the Holy of Holies was going to go through a real change. Yeah. How many of you believe the veil was rent? Yes. Yeah. And some still have the veil of Moses on their face. <laughs> and they can't see it because they're worshiping what they think is the pattern but they're worshiping a ceremony right. because they know the what they don't know the why or the who. Or the who. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you can't just keep looking at the pattern and say, look, we got it. That's how the Pharisees, that's how they begin to have their traditions yeah. because they said, this is our interpretation of the pattern. Right. And the traditions of men made the word of God. And this is why in many cases, not all, but some, have not accepted him as the Messiah yet. Messiah. It's because they keep looking at the pattern of this is how we think he should come. Yeah. Okay. Amen. So now let's go to the pattern prophesied. We're moving out of the foreshadow into the pattern prophesied. Literally, the pattern is the eternal plan declared to process times and seasons. Times and seasons are not the pattern. Amen. Can I just make it simple? Jesus is the pattern. Yes. The word is the pattern. <laughs> not some of the things we want to make it. So the pattern prophesied, the eternal plan declared, it was declared through the process of time and seasons. But some have actually made the times and seasons a pattern. Yes. And so they hold God in a box. Yep. They say he can only move according to this time and this season that's according to a certain calendar. Wow. Now, again, I'm not putting down the calendar and what it's good for. Yeah. But what I'm saying is that we can't limit God. Right. Yeah. I see the line, Dr. Rick. When you speak, I see the line. When Jesus said it was not time yet. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right there. Anybody ever notice that when they when he's about to back ascend back into heaven, yeah. uh, they said, "Will you now at this time return the kingdom to Israel?" Yeah. And I think he must have had a look on his face like, "What's with you people?" Right. Yeah. And I think it's because they asked the wrong question. Yeah. They wanted the kingdom to be restored to Israel's understanding. Yeah. When really what they should have asked, are you going to restore Israel to the kingdom? So he said, it's not given for you to know the day or the hour. So check your calendars all you want. You don't know who you are yet. What is that scripture? In Acts chapter 1, is it? No. Chapter 3. When he's going back to heaven. Oh, and I have something else on that, but I'm not going to go there. Okay. So let's talk as since, uh, you know, uh, Deborah who is the advanced person in the class, got us to the feast and the festivals already. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love you. I'm teasing you. Okay. They are holy days, not holidays. Holy days. Yeah. Yeah. They changed that. Thank you, Lord. Wow, yeah. it's holy days. It's deceiving what they want us to think. Yeah. yeah. And they're, they're, not, they're not even holy because of what they do. Works don't get you into the kingdom. Yes. Amen. But they're holy because of what they represent. What they represent. Yes. 
So, now this, this may get me into some trouble, but I, I want you to give me a chance. <laughs> Even the feast and the festivals are not the pattern. But they are prophetic declarations of progress within the patterns. You say, I've even had people say, Dr. Rick, you're too technical. You know, I think we need to be a little more technical. Right. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I'm not trying to be technical just to be technical, but I think we need to go deeper. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. We've got to understand something a little deeper than what we've been uh, one dimensional thinking. So I want to say it again. The feast and the festivals, holy days, not holidays, are not patterns, but prophetic declarations of progress within the patterns. The patterns were set to foundations and principles, not to feasts. Feast represented where we're at in the time and the season. Concerning the pattern. Roll it around in your head just a little bit. The annual feast of the Lord. Now see if every one of these feasts, and again, I we could do 20 weeks. Hey, once I did 98 weeks on bear much fruit, be my disciples. <laughs> so... You know, I could probably do 98 weeks on the feast, but... But you also went a long time with the feast. Yeah, yeah, I, I did that. So this is just kind of like skimming the top because we're not really on the feast as a study right now. But I, I wanted to include it because Debbie is, is exactly right. It's important. The annual feast of the Lord declared seasons to be fulfilled and some are ongoing. So every one of the feasts was not to get stuck on that and, and to just kind of rehearse back when God did something back there. Although it's connected. But it actually were seasons to be fulfilled prophetically. And look at them. The Passover, number one. I'm doing seven of them. Liberation from Egypt. The coming over. Everybody say coming over. I mean, you believe if, we, if it meant coming over, we ought to come over then. Some are still stuck back there. Number two, unleavened bread. Basically was a cleansing through. Number three, first fruits. Tithe of the produce. It is a springing forth. It, it's agricultural. It's a principle. The feast of weeks or Pentecost. Shavat means 50 weeks. Harvest are the beginning of new cycles. Is anybody seeing the theme here? Feasts were supposed to launch us forward. Not just be ceremonies back there. Then there's the Feast of Trumpets. Rosh Hashanah. The blowing of the ram's horn. The declaring of progress. How many of you know that now you're the shofar? Yes. Then there's the day of atonement. Yom Kippur. Forgiveness, repentance, and changing the way we think. Yes. And by the way, redemption is better than atonement. Yes. Atonement just paid for the past sins. Redemption got us into our future. So it was just the beginning of something. And then number seven, the Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot, the festival representing 40 years in the wilderness, God's provision, his protecting, and his coming into promise, or they're coming into promise. So do you see something here? This actually was the activation of the pattern. It was saying, now you're beginning to sew the dress. I think his plan, the entire plan, he, he was the one that, he's the one that manifested it. Yes. So any questions, any comments? I don't want to go too fast. Okay. I'm going to take that as you don't have any. 
feast in the Hebrew, mod, means appointed times. Remember, the pattern was prophesied. It was the eternal plan declared to the process of time and seasons. So we're seeing the pattern processed through the feast. The feasts were appointed times recognizing and preserving of seasons. For example, every seven years, forgive all debts. Am I right? Yeah. Every seven years, let the land rest. Uh, the 50th year is the year of Jubilee and so forth. And, and those feasts in different ways, there was the wave offering, there was the all the different things they did representing the pattern in that appointed season. So when God processes something, he cultivates it forward and never backtracks. So some of these things have already happened. Yes. I'm going to go as far as to say, really, all of them have already happened. Mm -hmm. But some are still part of the process. How many of you believe we've already had Passover? Yes. Now, we, when, when you do a Passover dinner, or Seder is it what it's called? When you do a Passover dinner and have a remembrance, that's wonderful. I think it's awesome. But we're not stuck at the Passover. We passed over already. He is our Passover. In fact, what you see here in all seven, he is all these things. So Colossians chapter two. I want you to have a big round table when we get done with this. Colossians two sixteen and 17. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink. Or with regards to a religious festival or a new moon celebration. Uh oh, look at this. Or a Sabbath day. These are a what? Shadow of the things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. Woohoo! I, we can do all of these. We can have all of these feasts and say, wow, we want to remember what this was about. But it's not the pattern. It was prophetically speaking of what the pattern was representing in Christ Jesus. He is all of it. He's our great and high priest. He made it to where we go in the Holy of Holies. On and on. Now let's go to number three. Y'all good? Yes. The pattern prevails. Ooh, this is the part. I was just in my office. I'm like, hallelujah. My dog was just like, what's wrong with you? But the pattern prevails. Everybody say that with me. The pattern, the pattern prevails. prevails. Beyond, beyond types and shadows into manifestation. So Hebrews 9, 23 and 24. It was therefore necessary <laughs> that the patterns or the foreshadow examples of things in the heavens should be purified with these things that were representations. But the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, yeah. which appear, or which are the figures of the true, figures, foreshadows, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. It was necessary to have these examples of the pattern. Second Corinthians chapter three, verses 10 and 11. Or even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect. I love it. By reason of the glory that what? Keeps excelling itself. For if that which was done away was glorious, 
Much more that which remains is glorious. Because the glory always excels itself. Because the pattern is eternal. And we're just getting in on it. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 17, Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Colossians 1, 27. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ, the blueprint pattern, in you, the hope of glory. So we are made, we are the dress. And all creation that is being restored in the pattern and live in the prophetic promise of development. Now, this is what I want to share with you that's not on your page. So I'm going to try to go slow so you can write it. Because God gave me this as I was walking out. <laughs> and probably gave it to me earlier, but I was just busy. <laughs> the pattern, and if you notice this, if you saw my advertisement, you saw in the background, you saw what I'm about to say, but maybe, maybe didn't notice it. The pattern is a sound wave. A sound wave. A sound wave. I even put it in the picture with, that I was advertising and forgot about it. And God reminded me of it as I'm walking out. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, the pattern is a sound wave or a frequency. Mm -hmm. This is why we can't go back to the weak and beggarly things and ceremonies to try to prove, look, I'm very Hebrew or I'm very religious or I'm very spiritual because what the pattern is, is his voice. God's word, his living word, his voice. This is why we can have the scriptures for reference. But we need the voice for the pattern. Because he is, he is the fulfillment of scripture. And he's speaking, even though he already finished it before he began. He's speaking it from eternity into time and into us to fulfill it in the earth now. So we can read a scripture. This is why, have you ever read a scripture and thought God just put it in there last night? Sometimes. And you've seen it before. You're like, what he did was he added his frequency to it. So the pattern came alive. And then he prophesied to us through his word. So this is the pattern that the Pharisees missed because they simply went with the written law instead of understanding the who of the law and hearing what he said about what Jesus was there for. Oh, yeah. So, wow, we had a good room in here. Uh, Shirley, Dr. Shirley. Hey, everybody say hi to Dr. Shirley. Great to see you in here. And, uh, yeah, thank you so much. Powerful, she says. Well, we're going to have a round table. We don't do that on Facebook, um, just with those who come in person. So thank you so much for tuning in. Please share, share, share. Somebody needs this yes. uh, because I think it answers some questions as we're talking about God's kingdom blueprint. Amen. Amen. So we're going to say until next time, what do we say? To, to the, the king. king.